All right. What is up, Family Legacy Funding Squad? Hey, in today's video, I just want to hit on the topic of responsible credit card use. So, you know, credit cards have a really bad rep because a lot of people don't use it responsibly. Um, important thing to know is like anything, this is a tool, but this tool is very powerful. With great power comes great responsibility. And, you know, credit cards, especially when we're talking about 0% business credit, literally, you know, if you have access to 100K and, you know, you're working a shitty job here, you know, there's a business that is going to take you from here to over here, you just need the money for it, then fuck yeah, it could change your life. But if you are not being responsible with how you use it, it could also do the exact same thing. You could, instead of taking you all the way from here, it's going to take you all the way down here, even worse position than you could have thought that you've been in. So in today's video, I just wanted to quickly go over responsible credit card use. Um, I'll go over a couple topics here, but just things to think about as, and I'm going to have this in the beginning of the course, because I want you guys before we even start applying for funding, that you guys are being safe and you are one being safe, but two, making sure you're going to get a return. Number three, being able to mitigate as much of that risk as possible, right? So most of the people here in this group are going to be investing in real estate, some, some shape or form, right? And one of my first points that I want to make is do not quit your fucking day job, right? I, I feel like you hear a lot of gurus online where they're like, hey, you just need to get like two properties and then, you know, quit your fucking job, make passive income. That's not the fucking case, right? You know, that like what we're teaching here is 0% funding will get you into deals. Then we could fund the rest through another like home lending type of product. But if you're doing like a buy and hold rental, that's not going to make you passive income to where you could quit your job immediately, right? You're still going to have to hustle on that um, job while you're doing this on the side. You know, for me, when I got into real estate, you know, I was working a sales job, working at credit stacking, doing being a sales coach over there. Plus, I was doing Airbnb. Plus, I was working on fix and flips. Plus, I was starting my own coaching company as well. So I was doing all these little things on the back end just because before you go all into whether it's a business or investing in real estate, you know, you want to make sure you don't just buy into the dream that, you know, you still got to make money. And if you're investing into something, putting all your eggs in that basket, then you're more likely to screw up because you're so desperate needing it to work and kind of forcing it to happen. So number one is do not quit your day job so you aren't desperate for these investments. You know, quit your job when, you know, you feel comfortable that what you're investing in is going to make enough to like provide for you. And you know that once I put go 100% in, then I'll be good to go. Right. So number one, do not quit your day job. Number two, I cannot stress this enough. You know, have a fucking backup plan. Right. So obviously we're in, into real estate because of all the benefits. Right. It's going to appreciate. You know, we're going to be able to gain equity. It's going to cash flow. We can depreciate. So, right. There's all these different ways of making money, but we also need an exit strategy. Right. So. I'm just going to go through a couple examples that I personally use whenever, you know, that makes me feel more safer as an investor because I'm not just putting all my eggs in this basket for it to work out because like, let's say worst case scenario, I always like, you know, hoping for the best, planning for the worst. But like for me, I always know when I go into these investments, like even if I didn't make a single dime out of this, you know, this isn't going to ruin me financially, right? Because one, I didn't quit my day job. But number two, and this is why it's super important, is, you know, have these different backup plans. So personally for me, like if I invested in something and I didn't get a dime out of it, I know I'm safe because one, I invested in crypto when I was fucking like 14 years old um, back when it was like 300 bucks. So like I'm not going to say how much I have, but like, you know, it, there's a good, good amount that I have there to where if something didn't work out, I could pay it off and I have a plan. The other thing I have as a backup plan is I invest in um, life insurance. So something in another video, we talk about the infinite banking concept and how you could leverage life insurance and basically invest in it. It's going to appreciate and you can take out loans against it while it continues to appreciate. So if worst case scenario, you couldn't pay something back. You just take a loan out against the life insurance while it continues to appreciate and pay that back. 
So there's another exit strategy, right? I also have savings, right? Um, the other big thing too we talk about later in this course is how to extend the 0% term. So, right, like if we're investing into a property, right, and let's just say the first year you were planning to do a fix and flip, it just didn't turn out well, like, you know, you're still going through the process. Excuse me. Um, you're still going through the process and, you know, it's going to take you more time to be able to pay back the cards. Then there's ways of extending the 0% terms via balance transfer or cashing out, liquidating the car cash from a, another 0% business credit card to pay off the original one. That way you buy yourself more time. And, you know, if you're able to extend those 0% terms for two years, three years, four years, five years, odds are the asset's going to appreciate enough to where one, you'll be able to have enough equity and the appreciation and you could pay off the cards. If you were to just like, let's say, sell the property, you would have enough to pay back the cards and keep some for profit. So that's just like an, um, an example. The other thing too is, right, don't quit your day job. Um, you don't want to just rely on your investments, especially if you're just starting out. So those are just a couple of ideas of just having a backup, right? Um, real estate's fucking dope. It's a great tool for generational wealth, building that family legacy. But again, we need to be able to plan for the worst um, and make sure we're covered in all bases, right? Something else, okay, so number three that I wanna go over is do your due diligence on whatever you're investing. One thing I do wanna say, like everything literally has risk. Like even you guys investing into this program, it has risk, right? You guys might've thought like, oh, what if this is bullshit? What if this is a scam? I'm not gonna get any value. What if I don't get any, you know, funding? Like that's very common to, to you know, be risk averse, right? You don't want to lose. However, something, uh, a mindset I wanna instill into everyone is 90% of the population is focused on not losing. So what happens? They play it safe, right? And they never go after anything, right? But if you're focusing on, how do I fucking win? You're naturally going to, you're, you're going to fuck up, you know, and that's just the name of the game. And that's, that's something you guys need to know is if you're getting into investing in entrepreneurship, whatever, you will lose money, right? But, you know, anyone who's successful is going to lose. So, right, you still want to be risk averse, but don't be so risk averse to where you don't even take any action at all. So, my number one tip there is, you know, you'll never know 100%, um, but you could at least calculate the risk mitigation, right? And by calculating risk, mitiga or risk mitigation, sorry, right? One is having those backups, those different ways of paying it off, you know, extending the 0% terms, having, you know, a stockpile of other investments that might be able to pay this debt off if it doesn't work out, not quitting your job. So there's that, but more importantly, doing research into the, you know, if you're, if you're getting like a partner or investing in something, right, just research as much as you can, get as many reviews as possible. Um, again, don't let analysis paralysis hold you back, but, you know, take the amount of time that it requires for you to feel like you have everything in check and that you feel confident in it. And just make sure um, you're going into something that, you know, there, there's low risk for you. So for example, like with this course, right, you know, I'm able to build a lot of trust with people because my offer comes with a guarantee, right? It's just like, hey, if we don't get you at least like 50K in funding, I'll keep working with you until we get there, right? That's going to make you feel a lot safer and that lowers the risk mitigation, right? Um, just using a couple of stories on my end, one of the businesses I tried starting years ago was an automated e-commerce store on Amazon, right? Um, honestly, me and my partner could have done a lot more due diligence, we we're just so focused on the vacation and like, you know, um, and didn't really focus too much on the mitigation side of things. We ended up losing 25 grand on it. Right. And I don't want to see you guys do that as well. Um, and with that being said, a lot of these automation things, like at least auto e-commerce automation, trucking automation, like I'll tell you right now, you know, there might be some of them who are legit, but do not fucking invest in it. What you need to be investing in is your own knowledge because nobody could fucking take that away from you. And once you're able to get into real estate, nobody could fucking take that away from you as well, right? Because um, we're going to get into profitable properties that pay for itself and we have 0% business credit funding to scale or, you know, to fall back on if we ever need more time to pay things back, 
right? So do your due diligence. Don't be like me uh, and make some mistakes. Um, but again, you know, I lost some money on that and I'm totally okay with it. Like at first I, I was like, this is pretty fucking shitty, right? It, it's okay to feel bad, but um, you know, it's all just a lesson, right? And if we could avoid those lessons before they even start and you could learn from my mistakes, I would love to save you guys 25, 50, 100 grand, whatever it is, um, before jumping into something where it's going to cost a lot of money. So do your due diligence, you know, invest in your education or at least the research of whatever you're about to invest in, right? Um, lastly, the, the fourth and final point I want to go over is only apply for what you need, right? Don't, don't max, like, let's say, for example, you know, we get approved for a 25K card or something, right? And right now your business only needs like 15K of it. You know, go use the 15K. Don't just spend the 10K on some other shit just because you have it, right? I feel like it's, once we start getting a shit ton of funding, it's so easy to just be like, heck yeah, I have all this cash. Like, what can I go like invested in? And I've seen other people in other groups where, you know, they get a hundred K, they invest in something and they're like, okay, I saw this thing about, you know, Shopify automation. They're asking for like 10 grand. Fuck it. I have it. I'll go spend it. And then they just get scammed or something like that. Right. You don't, don't apply for more than what you need. Right. And if you have more left over, then that's fine. Just keep it there. If you don't have anything good enough to spend it on, then don't do it. Right. And that all goes back to the due diligence phase. Um, You know, I I would say when you guys are first starting off with the funding, start off slow. Make sure you're you're on track to getting those returns and then put a little bit more fuel on the fire. But something I've seen again is people get excited. This is so much funding. And then, you know, they just aren't being responsible with how they're using it, Um, you know. And I've, I've, I'll admit too, I probably made some of those mistakes myself. And that's why I'm t- telling you guys, you know, learn from it because I've already done it. So you guys don't have to do it yourself. But those are the four key main points. One, don't quit your day job if you're just getting into investing or starting your business. Keep that. It's safe until you're able to use these investments to supplement your, your other income, your active income. Number two is have a backup plan on how you're going to pay it back, right? This could be through savings, other investments, you know, whatever, extending the 0% terms. Number three is do your fucking due diligence. Don't be like me. Don't lose 25K on some scam scam automation business. Invest in yourself. Spend the time in learning and researching before you get into things. And number four is only apply for what you need. Don't go overboard. Um, Don't get too excited and just start spending a shit ton of money just because you have it. But That's basically it, guys. Thank you again for lending me your eyes, ears, and attention. I appreciate you guys being active in this group. Um, But yeah, as usual, peace out. Much love. Stay beautiful. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.